And we're live. Hi, everybody. Uh, Joe Chaffee here with Joe Rayo on tonight's Joe and Joe Weather Show. Apologize for the late starts this week, but it's one of those things where you got uh, uh, I got a lot of personal nonsense that I'm taking care of. So uh, it, it's just been eating my time. So I appreciate everybody's patience. And uh, Mr. Rayo, hope you're doing well today. I'm doing just fine. I was uh, just looking on my uh, atlas here at the places that are going to be getting creamed with about 30 plus inches of snow, including Adams, New York, Barnes Corners, one of my favorite towns, Lowville, uh, um, Pierpont, Pierpont Manor. I mean, these are places that uh, they're in Jefferson uh, County in uh, upstate New York and Oswego County and Lewis County. The, these, these folks are getting and will continue to get bombed with uh, snow and blowing conditions, Joe, for Another uh, at least 12 to 24 hours. Unbelievable. Well, well, I got I got a map for that, so let me just bring that up. Hang on one second. And now this doesn't I, – I, I'm guessing that this doesn't count. Let me just check. You know, whenever you look at these National Weather Service uh, maps, uh, always make sure you check the timestamps. So the timestamp on this is at 6.49 p.m. And usually this – when you see them uh, as you progress through, through a winter weather event, some of the weather offices will update them on a regular basis, and, and more than just the, the times when the forecast packages go out. So uh, these numbers you see here, I'm thinking it's on top of whatever's already fallen on the ground. Uh, I mean, they could also very well be total snowfalls, but they might, they might very well be uh, in addition uh, to what's already happened. And, so, and also, by the way... So we're not sure whether or not this is uh, projection or prediction on top of what's already out there, or what has already fallen. We're well, not they got they up the numbers because they have 32 for Watertown, and then they got this small bubble between Watertown, High Market, uh, Lowville, and Pulaski, like in, in between those four towns where uh, there's a uh, – got to see what that scale is. Is that 48? That's 48 plus. So that must be close to wherever, where Tug Hill is, I'm guessing. Yeah. I'm. Uh, in fact, let me go back to my atlas here and see – if I can nail down any any specific uh, town or city, and that might very well be where Barnes Corners is. Barnes Corners, as I've mentioned often enough here on our uh, discussions, uh, is this one little lowly location in upstate New York that always seems to get, uh, I think they get something like uh, annually, like three or four hundred inches of snow. So let me just check right. and see. While you do that, I got the armory cam from Syracuse. It doesn't look like much of uh, anything is going on there right now. I know it was snowing there when I checked it uh, this morning. Uh, this is at armorycam.com, uh, uh, which is, uh, you know, right in the, is it like the heart of Syracuse here? And, and you always see, but it does snow on this camera. It does look pretty good. And I got a Tug Hill camera here somewhere. Uh, by just, the way, it is, by, by the way, that little white blob is indeed, where Barnes Corners is. So there you go. Any of you out there are snow lovers and really want to see snow, more snow than I think that you ever could imagine, that's the place to be is Barnes Corners. In fact, I remember years ago, Joe, that, um, and this is the only time I ever saw this, somebody was trying to sell his house in Barnes Corners, and you know where he made the, uh, he put his advertisement? In Weatherwise Magazine. <laughs> well, you have to, look, if you're going to live up there, you better be a snow lover <laughs> because uh, that is, uh, you know, that that is that's overtime up there. You know, that 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 uh, when the lake effect machine goes on and works in full force, uh, it, it, it is it, it is something to behold. Um, hang on. I, I know Tim. Yeah, here it is. Hang Timothy sent me Timothy Veltman sent me a. Um, uh, uh, a camera from Tug Hill, so I'm going to see if I can try and get that up on uh, on 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 here. Hang on a second. Uh, did you mention Boonville? I meant. I think I oh, mentioned I have Barnes Corners. You have Barnes Corners. Yeah, I got a shot of Barnes. Barn. The problem is the camera is buried. Yeah, the, so <laughs> that's that's not good. The, yes, the camera's buried. Um, all right, we got, oh, here's Redfield, so let me take a look. Well, apparently they must be in between, 
at the moment. Well, I'm going to bring it up on the screen. And uh, uh, this is from uh, northernchateau.com. Uh, they got a ton of cameras here uh, with uh, from all over the place in upstate New York. But this is Redfield camera number one, where it's not snowing. But apparently it is snowing in Redfield camera number two. But all you can see is a still shot. So same issue there. And, oh, here's on what uh, camera number three. It looks like they got a little bit of a break and they've cleared uh, some of the snow there. Uh, see, I'm just trying to pick a couple of spots here. Let's try Montague. Now, the problem is, yeah, look at this. The problem, <laughs> it looks like strands of spaghetti. The problem here yeah. is is that uh, where it is snowing, it's snowing so darn hard uh, that uh, we really can't really see very much. The, the uh, snowfall analysis through 7 o'clock this morning, uh, where much of the snow fell in southeastern Michigan, uh, areas of uh, getting uh, some places uh, seeing uh, basically two uh, two to four two to three two to four inches uh, in uh, areas in and around Detroit uh, going into northeast Indiana northwest Ohio and then uh, along the lake shores to Cleveland uh, bands of three to four inch snows all the way up to Buffalo now again this is uh, only through 7 a.m this morning. So tomorrow we'll have the update that will include all the snow that fell today and what's going to fall tonight and tomorrow. Meanwhile, uh, also uh, in southwest PA and then down into West Virginia, there were a couple of uh, max spots of four to maybe as much as six inches. And then, you know, some patchy snows as you go up uh, toward I-81 north of Binghamton toward Rochester, mainly a coating to an inch or so. Uh, and, and again, this was through 7 a.m. So we'll see what uh, what comes of it. Uh, later on. So, um, it looks to me, Mr. Rayo, if you take a look at the radar tonight, uh, there's still, uh, there's a nice band over Lake Ontario going e uh, west to east, straight across the lake, the long road, right. and it really just piles up once you go west, uh, go east of I-81, uh, up in that whole area that uh, we were just, was talk we were just talking about. It's amazing. So Absolutely amazing that once again, and when you look at the northeastern United States, you find literally a snow drought for the I-95 corridor. And meanwhile, there are places to the north and to the west that have just been continuously getting clobbered this winter with uh, significant snowfall or uh, considerable snowfall. And it's it just it's just amazing. You can't say that, uh, you know, if you wanted to broad do a broad brush statement, Oh, there hasn't been any snow in the Northeast. There has been tremendous amounts of snow in the Northeast, but it's just that the north of I ninety. Yeah, you gotta go north of I ninety. It's 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 been a whole different world, a whole different story. Yep, and we had uh, some heavy rain last night. By the way, um, <clears throat> I guess the weather service, yeah, you know, they didn't put up a wind advisory uh, until mid mid morning. And, and, and I, I happened to, I wasn't able to, to sleep well last night. So I was up at 5.00 AM and the rain had, had was coming to an end. And all of a sudden the wind just started howling. It actually caught me a bit by surprise as to how strong it was. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking at that point I said, well, maybe they should have put up a wind advisory and, and the wind just kept cranking all morning long. So finally, you saw the wind advisories go up for, for everybody. I don't know. How was the wind up by your way? Oh, pretty substantial. I, I, uh, I you know, my wind, for whatever reason, I have a, a Davis weather station, which really is, is a, should be one of the top of the line weather stations mounted on a mast in my backyard. And I have to tell you, I, I always get great readings in terms of temperature. I get great readings in terms of rainfall amounts and everything. Winds, I mean, I don't understand it. I mean, it could be howling out there. And the wind indicator shows like 12 miles an hour. Really? I've, I've never been able to get a good handle or a good reading in terms of wind. But uh, whenever I look out my window and I can see the trees bending in the breeze, uh, I know that the – and you can hear it too. Is it, uh, is, so, it, is, it, is it? Do the trees shelter it to a certain extent or as far as the wind goes? I'm not sure, Joe. I, you know, I'm, I am surrounded on three sides by trees that uh, are on the order of 50 to as high as 75 feet. But there's no leaves on the trees. Uh, so I don't understand why, you know, I'm not getting, I don't know. It's, it's just, it's just a, a micro, you know, 
whatever, uh, where, where the where the weather station, the mast happens to be. But I can assure you, we had a lot of uh, wind. We had a high temperature today uh, registered at 5.35 a.m. of 45 degrees. And when I checked the, uh, the uh, station at 8.55 this morning, it was down to 37. So there you go. That's when the, the front came through. And the front also came through with uh, 0.54 inches of rain. <clears throat> Considering I, had, I didn't have very much uh, when I went to bed last night, shortly after midnight. So a lot of that 0.54 must have been jammed into a very small amount of time, probably just before the front came through and down with the temperatures thereafter. Yeah, I'm just watching, I'm looking at the, the wide radar view here, looking at the snow coming off of Lake Erie into uh, eastern Ohio, western PA, in the, you know, in bands, of course. And then there's an east-west band in southwestern New York that goes, um, you know, pro- uh, it looks like it runs north. It's north of 17 slash 86, the highway there, uh, yeah. running east. Then there's a, a gap, uh, not too much happening along I-90 uh, for the time being. But you see, you got this. Uh, you, you probably you, you you just follow the whole stream starts to form on the Canadian side of Lake Ontario on the western northwest shores of the lakes, and then it just blossoms once it moves inland on the uh, east side uh, coming into uh, Mexico, New York and Pulaski and those 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 uh, cities, those towns, all of a sudden the radar just really blossoms out big time up uh, up in that zone. Uh, the I radar love, go ahead, I'm sorry. Skinny, I love those skinny bands, you know? Yeah. You one big blob that's located that's over uh, you know Watertown and Barnes Corner that area that's that's one thing, but the these little skinny they, they can't be much more than let's say five or ten miles wide. It must be interesting if you're on a an interstate like eighty one going north and you suddenly encounter or enter these skinny bands and you know you zoom along for about five or ten minutes, you're in like near blizzard conditions and then you exit out as you continue on that northward trek. Well, I just put the I got the Binghamton radar. And the band there's one of those skinny bands as, as you just described. Uh, looks like it runs uh, just north of Ithaca, crosses 81, but it's very narrow. And uh, what is that? Norwich? Yeah, so it's north of Norwich, and it almost gets to about about Cobbleskill, which is west of Albany, and then it and and then it just sort of dies out. And uh, seeing even a few uh, streaks of very light snow showers in in uh, northern uh, northeastern uh, Pennsylvania as they move east toward the Catskills. Uh, I want to see if I could go a little bit further to the north here. Let's take a look. Yeah, so here's the I got the the uh, radar up at Montague, and uh, yeah, I mean you've got uh, the radar is very impressive in that patch. My right. God, there's there's even um, you even got some yellows and a little bit of red showing up in there. I wonder if somebody's getting a little bit of th- thunder snow in that mess. Might very well. Yeah, I mean it's all east of 81. Uh, but it's solid. It's it's like an absolute wall. And then uh, there's more. I mean, it just it just keeps flowing in off the lake. This is going to be going on all night for these folks. Yeah, it's it. It must be incredible to live. And I guess I guess you know if you've lived up there for a number of years, you're used to this. But I, you know, my wife actually said to me, and I, I this is the honest to God truth. And I just stared at her for about two minutes. She she was watching she was watching us upstairs, Joe. And you were talking about how if you didn't have so much to do, you would have actually jumped in the car and traveled up into that area. Mm-hmm. And she actually said to me, you know, that would have been fun. Maybe we should have done that. You know, we could have gotten a, you know, found a hotel room somewhere and just. <laughs> uh, I, I, I've been I've been saying that for years. I will just tell you, though, you know, the 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 the, the, the chain hotels are not, uh, you know, once you go north of Syracuse by a fair distance, there, 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 there are not that many chain hotels there, and right. uh, if any at all. Uh, so, uh, you know, and most of the ho- the uh, hotels and uh, most of the motels that are up there are all seasonal. Although there is a there is a year round fishing, um, you know, fishing uh, that goes year round fishing that goes on up there. I mean, people are out there fishing in this, believe it or not. Uh, right. So, you know, if you if you if if uh, if you really want to. Um, uh, there is a, there are, I, 
I stayed at a place, if you ever think about it, actually, it was it was nice. It's called the Ice House, E-I-S. Right. And it's in Mexico, New York. And it's li- it, it, it's it's very very close to the uh, the sh- the east the, the shore of uh, uh, the east shore of Lake Ontario the the act you know right the beach there whatever you want to call it and um, yeah so if you ever think about wanting to go up there put check the, that's a place that uh, is reasonable and it's it, it's reasonably priced and it's clean um, and and the food there was actually pretty good. Now when you said when you said people are actually fishing in this kind of weather, yeah. Why suddenly did I have an image of Matthew McConaughey? <laughs> no, yeah, well, listen, when I see that commercial, they do that, okay? They do that. They they put little huts out there, uh, out on the ice, uh, and, and, and fish. Uh, they, are, um, they are one hearty bunch, I will say that. Right. All right, so um, uh, here's our storm. I got the surface map, the 21Z. Let's see if the 0Z might be out by now. Uh, yes, it is. And, you know, the low itself is in Canada, uh, well north of, uh, I, I don't even know what, to, I, don't, I don't know what cities there are over here, but uh, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty far north of uh, Lake Ontario. But you can see, folks, the isobars here uh, around the low. It, it's a nine. No, oh boy, you know, I got I just got new glasses. <laughs> it's a 987 low. I got really, really tight. The uh, air that's coming down around it, Joe, is pretty cold. And actually, uh, temperatures in upstate New York uh, at the moment are, are in the uh, mostly low 20s. So mm-hmm. uh, it, it almost uh, meets the old definition of, uh, of a blizzard. Yeah. Where, where, you had the, where you still had the temperature parameter because they took that out. Uh, correct. Because, then, because if you held on to the old temperature parameters, uh, blizzards would be – true blizzards would be few and far between. So um, I can't even remember the we, we've had a few blizzards here in the tri-state area over the last 30 or 40 years. But I can't remember one that actually fit the old, you know, definition of a blizzard. I think it was like 20 degrees or lower. I don't even think we did, we, would, we were that low in the uh, 78 storm or the 96 storms. Yeah, the, the 78 would have. I think both of them would have probably, but both of them would have re, because the 96 storm was very cold. Um, we uh, yeah, it it, uh, it 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 would have met the old criteria. I don't even remember when they changed the criteria. Right. All right. So uh, all right. So there's our storm. You know, much of the nation right right now is uh, quiet weather wise. There's not a, really a whole lot going on, uh, other than um, you know what you're seeing uh, in, um, in 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 the Northeast. And here's a close up view, by the way, of some of the. Uh, weather observations in, in a few places. Uh, Old Forge, which I just had up there. And, uh, <laughs> no, this is the Old Forge wastewater plant observation. Uh, the, the, apparently, they're, they've gone missing. Uh, Watertown is 25. Uh, uh, on the on the OB, they're reporting slight snow and ice fog. Uh, with uh, a quarter of a mile visibility, a west wind at 25, uh, at 22 knots, gusting to 27. I'm going to try to see what town, which, that's Watertown International Airport. Uh, what's this one? Oh, Fort Drum. Did they have a, um, uh, an armed services, uh, a marine base up there at Fort Drum? I believe so. Yeah, I'm just seeing with some of these obs. You know, I, the snow is 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 at the moment the way the band is set up is actually falling. It's north of Fulton, uh, Oswego County Airport, and then you got to go south of Watertown. You know, up to Watertown, uh, and so I don't have any obs. I don't have any observing stations uh, available uh, uh, in between. But you can't say I didn't try, folks. Yeah. So uh, looking ahead. To the next seven days, uh, we're seeing uh, we're seeing on WPC's rainfall uh, uh, forecast map down, but much of the rain that you see in the uh, Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley, the Lower Mississippi Valley, the precip here, and so, and it is quite substantial, three to five inches worth. Uh, this is going to be uh, for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday because we have uh, there's actually four little rip, four ripples of low pressure that are going to be moving along. And it's the last one on Wednesday that'll be the strongest of the bunch. 
But uh, this is a, another, Joe, it's another wash, rinse, repeat scenario. Yes. We're going through it all over again. It's, it's you know, when you lock into a pattern, you know, it does tend to repeat itself eerily, you know, these the way these systems evolve, eerily similar. So, you know, nothing's changed. Everything is pretty much the way it's been. You, you look at this stuff and it's like, I just saw this. And then you, you think about the one you just saw and you said, well, I just saw that. What you know, the one before that and the one before that. It's exactly. it's it's one after another after another. It's 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 incredible. Unbelievable. And it does not look, Joe, that we're a lot of people still asking, well, maybe things will change as we move into March, but if you went to the uh, climate prediction center uh site and took a look at what uh, they are forecasting for the six to ten days ahead of us, uh they have much of the eastern United States, including our area, in a 70% probability of temperatures that it will be above normal, 70%. So what does that, what does that say? That, uh, that, that pretty much uh, tells you that temperatures may very well during uh, that six to 10 day interval probably will be in the 60s. And dare I say that there might even be a day or two that we'll see temperatures in that six to 10 day uh, stretch perhaps even approach 70. Don't, don't bet against it. Yep. Don't bet against it. So here's, uh, you know, our storm moves up into Canada tomorrow. There's still going to be some lake effect. Uh, in fact, there's another upper trough that's swinging around. It looks like the lake effect actually gets enhanced uh, again tomorrow afternoon uh, across upstate New York and northwest PA. And uh, the rest of us will just be turning colder and drier. And even on Saturday, the lake effect machine goes on again. It, it, it was, it's been hardly on through much of January and February. And here we are at the end of the month, uh, getting ready to go into March. And this is a time usually when the lakes are frozen solid or mostly frozen. And you don't really get much lake effect at all. And they're getting it in a big way. But we'll at least have a nice cold weekend. And then, of course, you watch the high move out. You start to see this energy that comes across the south, and it, and and it starts Monday with a weak weather front that goes by, that tries to go by. It looks like it just sort of stalls out. A couple of showers with that, and then Joe, here's what that that would be it's just wave ripple number one. Ripple number two comes Tuesday morning into the afternoon. That goes out, and then ripple number three comes in Tuesday night into Wednesday morning ahead of a developing low that comes up. Wednesday afternoon and evening, and guess what? That wraps up into a big storm in eastern Canada, even stronger than this one. And we've got a really tight, you know, it gets pretty windy here. If this is right, two, if this is right, I'm going to say two things. First off, severe weather possibilities for the uh, Gulf states uh, on Wednesday with this, and it's possibly even the southeast part of the U.S. And then uh, for uh, for the northeast. Uh, you're going to see, uh, you know, that howling March wind setting up for Wednesday night and Thursday. If this is, if the GFS is is to be believed, with a, a nine foot, is that a 58 low up in New Brunswick by the time we get to Thursday morning? Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. And of course, you know, it pulls out. There comes the next high. It comes the next weather system, and you know, as you said, 60s in this. Uh, eventually, in this, uh, wouldn't bet against it. Yeah, and uh, of course, you know that March 4th is interesting because it's the only date on the calendar that you can turn into a declarative sentence. March 4th. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, God. Oh. So um, to support your contention of the fact that nothing has changed, I'm just going to go through the, the daily uh, exercise, the formality of running through the upper air just to show you that it doesn't change, folks. So the trough pulls out this weekend. Uh, we uh, see a deep uh, trough into the west that swings around, then that moves through, then that pulls out. Ridge comes back in the east, trough in the west, and so on and so on and so on. I'm it so just so doesn't on. stop. Yep. But it maybe, something will, maybe something will change at the end of the month or at the end of March or the beginning of April. Why do I keep seeing in my head, Joe, so many baseball games that you know, place like in New York and Boston and uh, Philadelphia, whatever I like got, that, that are that are being postponed because of snow? I I don't know why I keep thinking that, but 
Uh, it, this <clears throat> pattern has to break, and who's to say it could not break maybe by the end of the month? But as you pointed out last night, for it to break by the end of March, we have to start seeing signs of that by around March 10th or 15th. If we don't see signs by then, then I think you could pretty much take the towel, the white towel and, and throw it in and call the fat lady over. I know she's already sung. She's already hours. sung, but she might want to do an encore. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Which, which, which we're totally not opposed to. Um, so uh, let's do a little, br a little bit of Briller Jeopardy uh, as soon as I can uh, bring up uh, – Bring them up, so give me one second here. And it's while been... you're doing that, if anybody has a clear sky right now, or generally clear, uh, and you have a good unobstructed view toward the west, I don't know if you had seen this earlier on in the evening. We still have this until they set at about 945. The planet Venus and a lovely crescent moon. They're not very close to each other, but they're kind of like on a line with each other, uh, in, and they're dropping down toward the horizon in sort of a tandem uh, type deal. The two brightest objects in the nighttime sky, and they're over low in the western sky right now. So if you have a chance, want to take a little break for a moment or two. And if you got a, a window facing west, I'm not going to tell any of you to go outside in this weather with the, the bitter cold winds and, and whatnot. But it is a very pretty sight to, to see. Um, and it is in our sky right at this moment in time. What's, All right. what's the deal with um, – I saw a, st a story there. They were uh, getting all worked up about this like this really tiny moon that they found. Did you see that? Oh, yeah. There's a there's a, like a, an asteroid. It's probably no bigger than a school bus or a, uh, uh, a tractor-trailer truck. Anyway, this asteroid apparently has gotten entangled into the Earth's gravitational pull. And for uh, the coming uh, next – few weeks or a few months, I think, this thing is going to be actually moving around the sun with the Earth in tandem. No chance of it ever, you know, physically coming down through our atmosphere and crashing onto the Earth. But for the moment, at least, it's in a gravitation, it's stuck in a gravitational lock with the Earth's uh, gravitational field. And so we have a, if you want to call it a moon or a satellite, along with our, you know, natural satellite, the moon, we have right. this little piddling little thing now that is traveling with the Earth through space. And, and I'm, I'm not certain how long. It's not going to last forever. It eventually will move out of the Earth's gravitational field and move back out into space on its own. But for the moment, at least, we have a little friend out there. We uh, do. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just. this has been a very long day for me. Um, and, and I've been up since, <clears throat> I think I got up sometime a little after four. I just couldn't sleep. And it's starting to catch up to me. So I, I just yawned while you were talking. It wasn't because, you know, that, don't take it personal. It wasn't. Hey, look, if you, want, if, you want a, if you want a good night's sleep, Joe, and if you want to go go down quickly, and the way it sounds, <laughs> you, may, you, may, you, may, you may be going Rephrase down. that. <laughs> <laughs> go on. Or, 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 or hitting the hay, so to speak. Yes. And falling asleep very quickly. If you, take if you have X tonight and sleep. No. If you have Optimum on your system, yes, just tune in to uh, WLIW Create, channel 133 at 11.30 tonight, and they're running The Joy of Painting with Bob Ross. I'll be, I, will be out, I will be out at that will point. You, he will put you to sleep really fast. Right, Bob? <laughs> oh, God. All right, so let's do a little Briller Jeopardy here, okay? You ready? Yes. All right, we got two of them. All right, so the lowest temperature ever in Hawaii and the highest temperature ever in Alaska. All right, well, the question here with the Hawaii question, is it Oahu Island, the big island? I mean, where, where exactly uh, are you me. talking about Hawaii as a state? I think Hawaii is a state. Uh, you see, the, the problem with that is, is that you've got on the big island, you've got Mauna Loa and Mauna Kea which extend upwards to almost 14,000 feet. All right, so look, I'll just tell you that it's one of those two. It's one of those two. Right. All right, so I'll say, uh, what could it possibly be? What would be at that altitude? Mm -hmm. uh, but at that, the latitude is like 15 degrees north. All right, I'll say... 20 north. Degrees. 20 north. 15 degrees. No, uh, uh, Mauna Kea, yeah. the lowest ever recorded there was a dozen, 12. Well, hey, look. Well, they had blizzards up there. I'm three degrees off. Yeah, you know. okay. Um, 
And then, <coughs> now, the highest for Alaska. Well, the highest for Alaska, I, I would presume, it could be it could be Juneau, but then again, Juneau is so close to the coast, and they may get a, a, a breeze that will keep them cool, moderate. So maybe what we're looking for is a place that's inland, like Anchorage or perhaps Fairbanks. Um and I think it get pretty warm up up in that area. Well, it, I'll say I'll say I'll say ninety ninety two in Anchorage. Uh, one hundred in Fort Yukon. Wow. Okay. Well, they had that string of nine. Uh, <clears throat> wasn't it this past summer? They had uh, uh, ninety degree temperatures up in Fairbanks, like two or three days in a row, something like yeah. that. Yeah. All right, all right. So now here's 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 the local one. Okay. Um, the only winter. In New York City, uh, in New York City Central Park, um, the only winter to have at least 10 inches of snow in the months of December, January, February, and March. When you when you say the only winter season, the only winter season. Okay, so that to, means that. To, what we're talking about is one, from one year transfer. Right. So December and then the the subsequent the the January, February, and March in sequence. So December, January, February, and March, uh, the only winter in, in New at, at New York City Central Park anyway, uh, to have at least ten inches of snow in in the, those four months in a row. The only the only season that comes immediately to mind, and I could go for three of those months. December, January, and February would be the winter of sixty sixty one. I know it. I know they had a big snowstorm, a blizzard in mid December of sixty. They had a uh, back that 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 nearly coincided with my wife's uh, entering this world. Mm -hmm. uh, they, we often talk about that. As her mother uh, used to tell me about, oh, it snowed so much, and then the but at January ah. this was the Kennedy snow. Inauguration snow, and then and then in February on February fifth of sixty one, we had like twenty inches of snow in parts of uh, the tri state area. But I don't remember anything from March of sixty one. So I guess that's not the not not the season that Scott Briller is talking about. Right. Man, I don't well, know. Well, it, it 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 was in our lifetimes ninety five ninety six. Really? Yes, and actually for Long Island. Uh, that's the, the, um, the months would be December, January, February, March, and April, because we had, we had 16 inches in the month of April that year. Uh, Andrew, Andrew Martell said just had a wind gust of 229 kilometers an hour in Grand Etang, E-T-A-N-G, -E Nova Scotia, 140 miles per hour in the easterlies driven by the Cape Breton Islands. Wow. Highlands, not islands, islands. Ooh. That's 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 impressive. That is impressive. Oh that, boy. That'll get your hair all ruffled up. It certainly will. So look, it it uh like I said, I'm kind of losing it right now. I can feel my ears are turning purple and whenever my ears are turning purple, that's usually uh, when blood is rushing up there and it's telling me you're tired, you need to go seepy by. So uh, okay. let's let's call it a night. And, uh, folks, thanks for your patience. Uh, tomorrow night, <clears throat> I think what uh, I think we're going to take tomorrow night off. Well, we have to. Because? Well, I, I don't know about you, but I'm, I am built my entire evening around watching uh, the uh, return of Stoney Curtis. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So, tomorrow night. No live stream tomorrow <laughs> night, folks. Okay? So, we'll be back. Um, uh, there'll be a weather in five tomorrow. Uh, I'll do it later in the day, so this way it'll carry over into tomorrow night. Uh, and uh, then we'll have uh, uh, probably no live stream on Saturday. If there was a pending storm, uh, I, I would do something. But it, it, right now, it doesn't look like there's anything worthwhile to, to look ahead to. So uh, we'll be back Sunday morning at 11 a.m. for the Joe and Joe Weather Show. So uh, have your coffee ready and uh, join us at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. I'll be here. Okay, good night, Mr. Uh, Rayo. As Harvey said to Ralph, I'll be here. Just make sure you're, you're here. here. Yeah. Good night. Night.